Um, good morning, everyone. Just a minute. It's okay, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, yesterday's class, uh, we have explained about uh, grammar, the different concepts of grammar. Okay. So, after that, today, uh, we try to understand the different parts of speech, and we have completed those concepts. But today, we will be doing um, the next concept, that is prefixes and suffixes. So, I have completed what is prefixes. So, what I explained with prefix was the word which is being added in front of another word so that it changes the meaning of that particular word. So, how can it change? It can be a supportive prefix. It can be an opposite prefix. It can be a negative prefix. Uh, reversative prefix, derivative prefix, place prefix, size prefix, time prefix, number prefix, class changing prefix, and miscellaneous prefixes. Okay, so these were the prefixes what we explained yesterday, and today we are going to start with suffixes. Okay, so I've explained this yesterday, and we have taken all the uh, brief things. So today, from there, we will take it ahead and we will start with suffixes. Okay, so what happens in suffixes? So suffixes are basically the words which we add at the end. Okay, so when a word is being added at the end, the meaning of the word gets changed. So if I add at the beginning, it's called as prefix. If I add at the end, it's called as suffix. Okay, so what happens in suffixes? There are two types of suffixes. One is um, noun, adjective, that is noun is name, place, animal, thing. Something that is enhancing a noun is called as adjective. The verb is action or activity feelings is called as verb. Something that enhances a verb will be called as adverb um, suffixes. Okay. So noun, adjective, verb, adverb. Okay. So there are four types of uh, two types of suffixes. In this, we have again two subdivisions. Okay. So today we are going to see what are the different types of suffixes. So the first one, what we are going to start is noun suffix. So what happens in noun suffix? When I add a uh, last word, the word gets changed like uh, osity. So if I add osity to audacity or capacity, it's going to change the meaning of the word. Okay. Capable plus acity will be capacity. Like and. What happens in and? Uh, denoting attribution of an action or a statement. That is appellant. If I make an appeal, I'm called as an appellant. If I'm an inf I have some information and I want to share that information, I will be called as informant. Okay, like that. Uh, a L will be verb action, whereas betrayal, betray is an action or an uh, feeling. Okay, so if I add A L to an action or a feeling, then it is called as verb suffix. So it will be betrayal, dismissal, or age. Age will be denotation and action or its result function or any other um, uh, aggregate of numbers. Okay, so it will be um, leverage, spillage, homage, bondage. Okay, so then you have uh, Asian that is a, a collaboration, exploration, evolution, acceleration. Okay, so all these things will be added for suffixes. So we have a list of suffixes in the textbook. So all these suffixes, what they have done is they have told you what is the last word that is being added and how it indicates that. Okay, what is the importance of adding it? So when you go through this, this will give you a basic understanding of how these words, like how suffixes will work. So in exam, most of you all are kept asking how it will be asked. So in exam, um, suffixes and prefixes will not be asked as such directly, or they can ask you or uh, give you a a particular word and they can ask you is it an supportive prefix or is it an opposing prefix or is it a derivative prefix time prefix or something like that or uh, they can ask you other questions where they will generally give you four options might be they will give you a word like betray and they can ask you what is the suffix of this okay they will give you four options betration betrayal uh, betraction and uh, any other word so there you have to select the correct suffix that is betrayal 
okay so for this perspective you can't uh, uh, understand or by hat everything but once or twice if you repeatedly go through these words these words will stay in your mind and it will be helpful for your exam so previous day or three four days before your exams start uh, revise it from now only but before your exams kindly revise it once or twice again it will be easier for you to remember okay that way related to your verb suffixes then uh, sorry uh, noun suffixes then we get into verb suffixes Phi and I phi. So betrayal was one. After that, A L was one. After that, F Y and I F Y or I S C I Z I Z A. Okay. This is beautify, purify, gratify, or capitalize, modernize, popularize. Okay. So these words are will be called as verb suffixes. So they won't ask you whether this is a verb suffix or noun suffix or adjective suffix suffix they won't ask you like that okay so they won't ask you whether this is an adjective whether this is a noun explain and all those things like that it will not be asked in general they will ask you if we give this word what will be its suffix format okay then you have adjective suffixes where it is able able that is audible uh, unaccountable readable like that then you have al ial so what you have for noun most of the things will be the same for adjective Whatever you have for verb, most of the suffixes will be same for adverb. Okay, so just go through all these things once. It will be easier for you to understand. Okay, then uh, we are going to start with the next concept that is called as combination words. So what happens in combination words? Let me read it out. There are words elements, word elements or combining forms that can be combined with other words that already exist to form a new word. These combining words have a singular word and a clear and consistent meaning, which is probably because they are fairly recent origin. Many of them are also technically and technical and therefore their meaning are less susceptible, susceptible to change. Most combining forms are Greek or Latin uh, forms. So here what happens is when the last word, okay, here they don't call it as a suffix, but here they call suffix or prefix, but here they call it as a different word. So bio is a different word, auto is a different word, crypto is a different word. So bio means life, auto means self, arch means chief, okay? So when a particular word is combined with another word, okay, together when they are combined, they give a different meaning altogether, okay? Like archbishop, arch rival. So rival is there, arch rival means he is the chief rival. Archbishop, bishop is a person who does the priest work, but archbishop means a person who is the chief of all the priests, okay? Like that auto, auto is self, Gra graph is a graph which we give, but autograph means a person who is writing on his own. Okay, autopilot is pilot is movement, but auto means it is automated to do the movement by itself. Okay, so when a word is being added to another word together, when they give a different word, okay, different meaning altogether, then it will be called as a combined words. Okay. So combined words, they have given certain examples. So like um, mac macro means macro organism, macro economics, micro means micro organism, micro computer, micro surgery, microgram, mid means middle. So midfield, mid air, uh, midway, that is it, it is in the air, but it is middle of the air. So the flight is not being landed, it is mid air. Okay, midway, yes, it is still in the runway, but it does not come to the place, or the train is still come, but it is midway. Okay, like that, when we try to um, give the meaning uh, by adding two words together, a new meaning is being formed that will be called as my combination words. Okay, then after this, we are going to move to the next concept. So, kindly go through all these words, these are not very difficult. So, just go through once after the class, it will be easier for you to. Uh, recap okay um then we have punctuations so what happens with punctuations see a uh, few people are asking doubts uh we will just complete the concept might be by uh nine o'clock uh, or nine five or nine ten we will start taking up with the doubts okay because we'll be held up if we are explaining the same concepts over and above right then 
uh, we start with something called as punctuations. So what are punctuations? Punctuations are basically certain kinds of marks uh, which are being used in English language or any other language for that matter. Why punctuations are important? Punctuations are something which give more emphasis to the word. That is where I when I put a comma, that means the half of the sentence is being completed, yet there is something more coming up in the sentence. If I give a full stop, it means, okay, the uh, sentence is being completed. If I give a question mark, that means the answer for this particular statement is not available and still we are looking out for. If I give an apostrophe, it means it is an exc exclamation. That is, I am something expecting and this is like something interesting, okay? Like this, each uh, punctuation will give certain expression, uh, that is certain feelings will be expressed when I use punctuations in uh, writing. Okay, so uh, here what they say is the marks such as stop, full stop, comma, inverted commas, hyphen, and brackets are used in writing to separate sentences and their elements and to clarify meaning are called punctuation marks. Okay, so if you read any novels or any other books or even textbooks for that matter, you will you would have observed this many times. There'll be commas, hyphens, okay, um, all these things coming into picture. The importance of punctuation in writing can be compared to the importance of uh, pause, annotations, and emphasizes used in the spoken words. Okay, then, therefore, one can state that the chief purpose of using punctuations is to make the meaning of the written passage clear. The punctuation mark removes ambiguity, if any. So, what happens with reading is you are not explaining in person. So, you have given the content and somebody else is reading. When he is reading, even he should have the same feeling or expression when he is reading. So, how can I get that feeling or expression in another person? By giving or inserting something called as punctuation marks. Okay, so that's why punctuations become very, very important. So what happens if I'm using punctuations in my writing style? Writing style? It is introducing delicate effects in style where I'm presenting my information, altering the flow of a sentence. So the sentence is not going blandly. If I give a comma, semicolon or something like this, this is giving more weightage to my sentences. Highlighting certain components. So if I use inverted commas or semicolons or something to write something that is important. So whatever is important content, I'm giving more information to that. After that, bringing about modulations in the sentence. So uh, there will be more voice modulations when I'm reading a sentence with a comma. What happens when I'm reading something with comma? One uh, before comma, I will read it in one um, uh, a, a voice okay when i go to the next statement i read it in a lower voice or a higher voice so you could have um, seen this in story narrations or story tellings if you have not done kindly go through uh, some youtube channels or anything where they narrate stories okay when a book is being read or um, audio books of any uh, any audio books or something like that there you will understand how voice modulation is done where every punctuation marks come okay so that's how uh, punctuations will give importance. So what are the basic various punctuations used in English language? The punctuations are capital letters. If a, a statement starts with a capital letter, then it means it's a new statement. Then the next one will be colon, then uh, underline, then space, full stop, dash, question mark, italics, hyphens, stroke, bold emphasis, uh, apostrophe, asterisk, uh, ellipsis, a question mark, semicolon, paragraph, comma, observation, numbers, brackets, and exclamations. Okay, so let's go and see how these concepts are being used. So the first one, what we use is space. So from a school uh, days, okay, when we started writing uh, words, from then they would have taught us once a word is being left, keep one finger and then write your next word. Then again, keep one finger, then write one word. So why they taught us this? So that once we uh, go in higher in classes, we will understand that once a word is being completed, I have to give a space. Then I have to start with another word. I have to give a space. So once I give a space, that means a new word is being started. So after each word, we have to give one space uh, one um, space, okay? Uh, but let's say if it is an end of a sentence, if it, 
if it is an end of a sentence we just give full stop and the remaining part of the sentence will be uh, remaining part will be left uh, blank and then we go to the next paragraph okay but when i go to the next paragraph i don't begin immediately if you see in school days they would have taught us when you are starting a new paragraph give two spaces then start your new paragraph okay so that's how we have been learned so that is the importance of using space in your writing skills okay so or your presenting skills then the next concept what comes is full stop so we all know full stop means it is an end of a sentence or end of a period or point okay it is a point at which something is going to end here uh, a full stop may be used after initials or uh, after a shortened form of a word to indicate an abbreviation so what how we use it we use it as mr dot or professor or p r o f dot or etc dot b dot a or figure dot or am or <clears throat> apj abdul kalam so these are the different ways in which a full stop can be used here after using it for names also in terms of numbers what happens if i have to write date okay few people will write it as uh, 10.11.19 that means 10th november 2019 few people will use uh, a forward slash or few people will use hyphen so it depends on person see a uh, hyphen or they will use for, forward slash forward slash so even dot or full stop is accepted in expressing numbers then the next one what we use is for decimals and units of money so here 10.5% okay or 10.75% or 99.9% so when i want to give a decimal expression i use points the next one is when i want to give paisa that is rupee and paisa then also i use something called as a dot okay that's a full stop full stop or a dot okay but omission of full stop today in certain places they have started to omit full stop where that is after address that the um, that head let he, after addresses that head letters or on envelopes so before in school uh, they would teach us that after after writing mr ajay i have to give a dot or i have to write a comma today that's being because of usage and people don't have time it is globally accepted that even if you don't write a full stop or a comma it is acceptable even for dates after completing the date that is 10 hyphen 11 hyphen 2019 we were supposed to keep a full stop but today it is accepted without that after name that ends in letters that is um, if they call uh, callers as let's say pavitra mohan or pavitra m so they used to call it as pavitra dot m dot okay that's how we are to write after initials but today it is not important so they can just write it as pavitra space m okay that is understood that's my initials then after title of books news uh, newspaper headlines uh, chapter headings uh, such chapters page numbers okay after all these things dot was mandatory today they have removed after uh, acronyms which are pronounced as one word for example aids okay before they had to have it as a dot i dot d dot s but today they don't have it as uh, any dots okay they just have it as aids or gst they don't write g dot uh, s dot t they, they they just give it as gst after that in alphabets which are being used as abbreviations wto gmt or bbc okay they are not using any dots then uh, alphabets or names here again if you see for doctor today it's become dr dot okay retired uh, uh, rd rtd dot uh, limited dot okay so they are just having it as a practice at the end then uh, in in between uh, names that's what i told you in between um, uh, initials also today they are not using they just go with a uh, k sing okay then for uh weight measures or chemicals or whatever they had before it used to be as k dot g but today they just give it as kg or seconds hertz or square kilometer minutes uh amp ampere uh o is oxygen h is uh hydrogen okay so today they don't emphasize that you have to keep a dot after all these things so it is all being exempted or it is accepted globally that even if you don't use it is easier it is understood okay then you have comma so what happens in a comma i have already told you if i have to write a big sentence i don't want to write the entire big sentence in between if I, or if i'm writing a, a complex sentence or a compound sentence what we explained in the previous uh, pages okay 
So what we do if I have to write any of these things instead of uh, having multiple sentences, I have come multiple sentences. I'm combining two, three sentences into one. So when I'm doing that, I'm using something called as comma so that it gives more meaning. OK, like here, if you see um, the house was almost in ruins, the house, but the tree started avenue was lovely. OK, so I can write it as the house was almost in ruins. Uh, the house, uh, the tree in the house gave gave it a very lovely avenue. Okay, I can write it as two sentences. Instead of writing into two sentences, I'm using something like comma. So I'm using one single sentence. Okay, so in this way we can ensure the comma is being used. So, which are the other places uh, where commas are generally used? Um, to separate main clause even when there are not linked by conjunctions. So conjunctions are what and but because neither nor okay. So before what we used to do was before a conjunction comes into place, we had to give a comma. But today with basic use, we are not using it. But if you read any novels or any good books, they will definitely use a comma before a conjunction. Okay, that is and uh, but or neither nor because either or all these things okay before uh, tag before tags question marks and comments that is you were late for the meeting comma weren't you okay so before any question is being posed in a sentence a comma will come into picture then i was joking you see so before any comments being given they give a question mark to denote words left out so here what they say is uh, if you read uh, any uh, frequent books or something you will understand this where romeo loves juliet similar to majnu lila okay majnu comma lila so i don't want to write uh, similar to the way majnu loved lila okay because i have to have certain constraint in words where i'm not supposed to use um so they will have you uh, they will give you a constraint where your answer should be less than 500 uh, words your answer should be less than 200 words like that if they give you a constraint so this is an easier way where a where you can express your uh, uh thoughts or what is in your mind this is very professional way of presenting your information okay then include thoughts uh, um, qua uh sorry qualifications or information like my son comma ajit comma is the head of the school i can just say it as my son is the head of the school or rather if i want to input anything then in my writing style it's better i use commas okay then uh, to set off uh, direct speech so uh, in direct speech indirect speech what we do i am tired comma he replied comma however i will continue the work uh, before leaving okay so these are the things where commas will be used where direct speech comes into picture that is he replied she said uh, that's what happened okay like that <clears throat> then uh, to separate to separate adjectives numbers uh, into units names and title or honor or a degree day month and day in a year okay like he is a smart comma reliable comma sincere and hard working so i am using so many adjectives to explain the student okay so when i am using so many adjectives i can use comma or for numbers okay uh, one lakh twenty five thousand and all these things or uh, to express the degrees what a person has taken comma or uh, when i have to tell what a person's position is uh, shri ram nath kovit uh, comma the president of india okay so i use commas here okay the next concept what comes into picture is hyphen so what is hyphen when compound words are being written i explained you what are compound words so when compound words are being ex expressed for compound words we can go ahead and give commas uh, hyphens okay so when i'm using compound words it becomes more efficient when i use a uh, hyphen okay it will be more emphasized and there are no set rules or uh, procedures or formats which will be used see we are explaining you all these components so that next when you go to executive it will be easier for you to understand how these concepts are being used okay for exam perspective they can ask you uh, how iphone is used for compound words uh, for normal words or something like that so that information you can study and understand this is basically from common understanding or general understanding perspective okay it's like brushing up what all you have studied so far okay don't uh, worry like uh, how will they give an exam what and all those things this is basic understanding which you should have and based on this a general knowledge question only will be asked for your exam 
okay so once or twice if you read this textbook it will be more than enough for you to understand the entire concept here hyphens can be used for prefixes or other elements or for suffixes or for main parts of the words being used with capital like if i want to start a word with a capital but i want to give a suffix to it like un american un indian or uh, neo darwinism darwinism or a neo nazism or anti indian okay so i don't want uh, we have always been told when we use a country name or something it should be in capital so if if that is the case then i can use a hyphen here hyphen is not visible but we can use hyphen here and start the next word with capital uh, when prefix is being repeated like sub sub committee okay there is a sub committee in that there is another sub committee in your college there might be one class in the class it can be group a group b group c okay so that is a committee a sub it's a class in that you have sub class in that you have sub sub class okay when i want to explain two things then i can use something called as hyphen then you have noun and verb being used that is hand operated hand picked or something then hyphen will be used an adjective and a noun is being combined like blue pencil then we given hyphen two adjectives are being combined old fashioned then yes i can give a hyphen it's not mandatory but if you follow these rules the way you present your um, information to the readers it will be more attractive okay then you have compound uh, compound numbers between um, 29 to 99 okay that's how we spell it out then you have starting and ending point like delhi jaipur highway then to avoid confusion or ambiguity we use it as um, indian history teacher uh, space indian uh, hyphen history teacher okay then prevent confusion between new formations that is recreation rather than giving recreation or reform instead of giving as reformed okay so uh, to give more stress to the activity which is being done if you want you can segregate and give importance in your writing style by giving in space then you have a uh, semicolon semicolon is basically um, uh, is used to separate two or more independent clauses okay that are placed together and which are of equal importance in a given sentence um and here uh, semicolons will give you give equal weightage for both the first and the second sentence okay it will not give importance to the first sentence and make it as a uh, the second sentence as a dependent sentence but your both will have equal importance okay so uh, semicolons are used to join words group of words sentences or separate group words that are already that already contains commas okay if i already have commas to segregate that i can use like uh, those present at the function included mr and mrs jane comma their children usha amit ragu after that it is a semicolon so that is one family after that i am giving a semicolon then it will be paul and uh, uh, joy thomas uh, semicolon raj and ravi malhotra semicolon colonel and mrs james and their children jyotsna julie uh, james junior semicolon etc okay so when i want to segregate a certain group of people but give equal importance or certain set of information and give equal importance then semicolon will be used okay then after that um, we enter into colon so what is colon colon is used for three major functions one is to introduce some kind of information they did not sleep last night why because they must be tired okay so if i instead of using because they were tired if i am not having enough um, number of words to express my information then i can use semicolon which means certain information is being shared to introduce examples today um, they face another threat to their survival that is starvation okay or today we face so much of threat um, in poverty and uh, um, economic crisis uh, i can give semicolon reason is coronavirus or lockdown due to coronavirus okay something like that when we give uh, importance to a particular situation then i can use semicolons to direct uh, to introduce quotations or uh, direct speech okay even for that we can go ahead and use colons um some of the other functions of colons are to point the readers attentions forward so when a, a reader is trying to give certain more attention or information after providing a paragraph of uh, writing information then we can use semicolons to introduce a number of items listed separately 
then I can go for semicolon. Like I can give semicolon, then I can say what are the info, what if I want to give multiple information in my statement, I can give it as furniture, milk, amplifier, comma, 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 comma. So then I can go with semicolon. Okay. Then uh, to present conclusion, finally, if I want to give any conclusion to my uh, entire paragraph or writing what I have done, then I can go ahead and give it as semicolon followed by what is being given there at the end. Okay. And after that, to introduce a question before I have started one uh, particular statement in the statement, I want to add one question. I can either add comma or I can give it as semicolon. Okay. To link contrasting statements, if there are two statements which are entirely opposite, then I can go ahead and give semicolon. Then to constitute a conjunction, conjunction we have explained already. So if I want to add and, but, or anything, even for that, we can use semicolons. Even commas are equally important. Even semicolons can be used in a writing style. Okay. Another heading is corresponding, like subject reference or something. Then we use it. Then to introduce powers, uh, credit card, power of plastic, um, past, uh, past promise, no, failure to deliver. Okay, like that. If we have, then we can go ahead. In uh, uh, bibliographical references, colons can be used after place of um, publication. So if publication is there, Delhi hyphen 2010, then we can go ahead with that. Okay, then we start with the next concept that is an apostrophe. In apostrophe, what happens? to denote positions and other kinds of relationships or uh, contraction of words. OK, if two words are coming into picture like quotes or girls or uh, can't isn't OK, so there we can use semicolon. Then uh, even for possession or other kinds of relationship, we can use semicolons. That is girls dress girls dress. OK, your girls dress is dress belongs to the girl. Girls dress means dresses belonging to many girls. OK, so if I add the semicolon before, it means individual girl. If I add it afterwards, it means many girls coming into picture. OK, so for that possession also, we can go ahead and use uh, apostrophe. OK, then we start uh, the examples are given there. You can go ahead and study once the class is being completed. OK, then we have quotation marks. Quotation mark is something where it is very important where I want to uh, express or uh, enclose certain mo more information or important information or give any stress to particular information or when a direct speech has happened or indirect speech has happened. OK, to uh, add that information or to add certain uh, motos or objectives or uh, mission vision statement and all these things for that semicolon will be used like let the buyer be aware customer is the king. OK, when I'm expressing all these things, semicolons can be used. So it, it depends how you want to use a semicolon. You can use semicolons and in between semicolons, if you want to stress something more important, then you can use a inverted comma. OK, so I can use semicolons and inside that I can use. Sorry, I can use quotations in between that I can use uh, inverted commas. OK, so quotations can be used to express any words like what is the difference between an order and a degree. OK, you can also give inverted commas or you can give quotations Any either of them work equally. Then you have brackets. So what happens with brackets here? We have round brackets, which we call call it as crescent brackets or square bracket. So when I want to give certain information, but that information is not very much important or it is important, but I can't leave it. But if I add it, it will give some other meaning. OK, but I want to give a final input to my uh, a final user so that he knows. Yes, we have done this work, but with certain conditions. OK, then I can use certain things called as commas. Uh, sorry, uh, brackets. So for example, if you see the number of unsuitable candidates have had um, uh, sorry, a number of uh, candidates had sent in their application. OK, instead of saying number of candidates in bracket, I'm giving the word unsuited. That is a number of unsuited candidates had sent in their application. I don't want to stress out on something called as um, unsuited, but here I'm I want to give the information and so I'm stressing on that particular point. OK, then you have something called as um, in crescent bracket, we start with something called as to um, enclose an abbreviation that is uh, that is be subsequently um, used in text. That is Department of Com uh, Company Affairs. So to, if I want to give a uh, uh, short form of that, then I can give the short forms in or abbreviations in um, brackets. OK, or 
to in uh, to enclose an translation or equivalent expression the beginning or uh, uh, closing or a foreign word is being used the foreign word meaning they don't know i have to give the meaning of that foreign word then i can give it in the brackets to enclose reference from other topics in the text like we can start with uh, if i want to give something like uh, a description as described in figure 1 okay instead of uh, giving the figure 1 continuously there and giving a comma if i give it in a uh, bracket it will be more uh, specific okay so it need not be too uh, like comma and all those things my style will improve and people will have confidence over me that i have a better writing style okay so these are all your styles which you have to include when you qualify and start writing or drafting uh, information okay so after that um, you have square brackets square brackets generally we don't use it but uh, overall usage what happens is if i have to give multiple information like how we had it in maths okay first a square bracket then a flower bracket then uh, uh, round brackets the same way here also if you want you can go ahead and use uh, both the brackets if i if i have to add many brackets in my um, uh, statement or information then i can start with a square bracket and the next adjacent ones i can go ahead and give it as um, flower brackets like here they have given they can give a square bracket inside that i can use a flower bracket okay so inside that i want to give anything other information then i can use it so the other things brackets what comes into picture is flower bracket here we have it as a uh, uh it's not mandatory you can also use normal uh, uh, round brackets itself but if you want to improve your style or be more specific then you can go ahead and give it a flower bracket all the examples okay then you have uh, angle brackets angle brackets come into picture most probably today for all your uh, uh um, hyper sorry hyperlinks okay so if i have to give any hyperlinks then i go ahead and give it an uh, uh Uh, angle brackets okay so in this concept what all we covered now was full stop comma hyphen semicolon colon apostrophe then uh, uh, quotation marks um, crescent brackets square brackets uh, flower uh, that is a uh, brace brackets then followed by uh, angle brackets okay so they just gave you a basic understanding how these things will be incorporated in your uh, writing skills okay so with this we complete the concept here they have given a basic five questions so if you have time you can go ahead and do it whatever is given here in the highlight concept that will be your answers okay so this is the format in which you will be asked questions in your exams so people who had doubts how this questions will be asked it will be asked in this particular fashion okay so after this institute will also have uh, mock tests uh, websites and all these things i think if you contact the chapter they will give you the link or uh, they will pass on the links for, for you there you can go ahead and you can have your uh, online test mock st mock test whatever you want you can do it there okay so with this we complete the first chapter so in the first chapter we understood what are the different types of grammars parts of speech that is noun verb adverb all these things after that we understood what are prefixes and suffixes and after that we understood how um, punctuations are being used in writing styles okay so these three concepts that is basic concepts were being covered and after that we are starting with the next chapter that is going to be english vocabulary okay so what happens with Uh, english vocabulary so what is vocabulary as such so vocabulary as such is not something like a rocket science okay this is the number of words that we know in english language for example let's say uh, the number of words that i know to express my thoughts is called as vocabulary if i have good language okay that means um instead of good i can use efficient instead of efficient i can use simple uh, effective uh, improvised okay so all these words i can use where i am um, capable of generating certain words so if you ask me uh, certain languages we will not know like if you ask me can you marathi i will, I, i can do that but when i do that i can do i know only two or three words okay uh, but i will not have more words where i can explain it clearly to you okay so that's where vocabulary comes in where 
I know many substitute words and it is easier for me to explain the concept. Okay, that's where vocabulary comes into picture and that is what vocabulary actually is. So vocabulary is the number of words that you know in a language which you can easily use in order to explain the content or um, the knowledge what you have to another person in a way they will be able to understand. Okay, that is vocabulary. So what is important here? Building your vocabulary is very important in reading comprehension. Why? Because each person will have a different style of writing and each person will use different set of words. Okay, you should have the knowledge of these words and so it is important to have good vocabulary. Building your vocabulary will improve your communication skills. Either it is verbal or written communication skill. It will improve and you may be able to understand a better understand another individual. OK, if you have good vocabulary, you can understand what another person is trying to explain. Then building your vocabulary may help improve your personal life, social life and professional life. OK, all three can be improved when you have a good vocabulary. That is good collection of words in a particular language. So in vocabulary, what are the things that are most important? That is the first one will be choice of words. Then you have synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, homophones, single words for a group of words, words frequently misspelled. Then you have then you have idioms and phases, then proverbs, foreign words and phases commonly used. And then we have abbreviations. OK, so now we will see in each concepts. What are these words? like what are these each concepts in respect to um, uh, vocabulary topics okay so in vocabulary topics the first one is choice of words so let's say you have to give a speech or write a document or you have to write one article or you have to write an answer in an exam or uh, uh, you have to give a speech uh, present a topic or uh, take a class or anything like this you have to first understand what is the words that I'm going to use in order to make my audience understand whether they are reading it or writing it or whatever it is. First, we should understand what is the mentality of my um, uh, mentality of my audience. OK, for this, the most important things what they have given here is the range or repeat repeat of your vocabulary. So you should know what is the vocabulary that you're using, whether it is very high low or medium okay like um small can be used or i can use minimal or i can use um less content okay something like this so we have to understand if i use the word minimal will my audience be able to understand or rather if i use the word small will it be easier for them to understand okay you have to understand what is the range of words so you shouldn't be like an hi-fi person who is talking all high-end words where your audience are not understanding or they are not able to connect to you so first and foremost please understand what is the range of words that i'm going to use okay whether it is basic range or medium layer or higher range okay ranges are nothing but the words how they are used in common day languages that is everyday talking uh, or everyday speaking what is the uh, words that we commonly use so will everybody know this meaning yes if everybody knows then it is well and good you can use that words if nobody knows the meaning actually then kindly don't use those words okay so it is making uh, ambiguity where you are not expressing yourself easily then your audience or persons you communicate with First and foremost, it's very important for us to understand who are our audience. OK, so I do take classes for executive and professional students. OK, so I can't use the same um, uh, tone or same information what I use to express the content for a professional student and for a foundation student. OK, so we should know how who are the people here and how they will understand based on their understanding. We should select the words and try to explain the content then type of communication what I use. So either you can have here. We have different types of communication you would have studied already. OK, in your uh, college and uh, degree. Here it is formal communication, informal communication or oral communication or written communication. OK, so it can be word, uh, verbal or oral. That is verbal is written or I can do it in a speech or it can be formal where I'm giving it to an uh, college students or uh, office employees or something or informal where I'm talking with my friends or family or whatever it is. So first know what type of communication you're using. Based on that, you have to be professional or uh, casual. All those things matters. Then after that, the message you intend to convey the information. What I'm trying to convey should be very clear. If it is a formal um, 
way, then I have to ensure that the information what I'm giving, if they are able to connect to a little extent, then it will be easier for them to go back and search the material or read the material and they can connect back to the information. OK, if I'm giving something like which is very random, OK, and it is not conveying the information what I want to give it to my uh, students or um, employees or whoever it is, then I'm not being a good speaker or a good presenter. OK, so always understand what is the message that you want to convey. Then the content and usage, the content, what we are trying to explain it to our um, uh, audience should be very, very clear. First, it should be clear in my mind. Then when it is clear in my mind, it should be easier for me to explain them and the usage in which they will understand. OK, regional or national differences in languages um, or connotations also influence your choice of words. So today what happens? There are certain words which you can't use it in every country. OK, for example, here what they have told us the word liberal. The word the word liberal means in British it is a positive uh, word, but whereas in American it is considered as a, a political abuse. So you have to understand who is your audience might be now it will not be important, but going forward if you become a international speaker or a Toastmaster speaker or something. There they will teach you that it is very important to know when you use certain words. OK, all words will not have the same meaning in each region. Each region, the meaning will change. We have to check on that. Then after that, improving your vocabulary. So constantly keep improving your vocabulary. Let's say. If I want to use a word called as liberal instead of that, I can use it as freedom. OK, so where I will know what is the alternative word that I can use that is called as improving vocabulary. So if I'm not supposed to use one particular word, then I will have a different word which will help me improve my uh, presentation skills. OK, then you have adaptation, the best strategy uh, for effective uh, wording. So here what happens is you should be adaptive. First and foremost, let's say uh, start talking a lot or start presenting your information a lot in English language. Why? Because if you become confident in speaking English without any mistakes or grammar mistakes or anything, then it will be easier for you to present it in front of audience. For example, start uh, reading more novels or listening to more uh, English related speeches or documentaries or uh, BBC related documentaries or um, might be National Geography do documentaries if you're animal oriented or uh, who likes wildlife. OK, so when you start listening to all these things or reading more of these things, you will learn new um, skills and you will understand how these people are explaining it to you. OK, so when we understand how they're explaining it to a random person, so if you, a few a few uh, documentaries, if we see, they will be basic documentary. They will use such a simple language, whatever the teachers within an hour, we will understand everything what they taught, taught us in an hour. OK, but there will be certain other documentaries which are very complex. OK, even if I see, I will not be able to understand because they are using certain jargons, which only people from that particular um, uh, industry or segment or knowledge will understand scientific terms they are using or historic terms they are using. We will not be able to understand. So it is always better to be adaptive to people at large. OK, so in order to do this, first and foremost, you should be clear and concise what you're going to talk. You should be clear be able to present this for different range of people. If people don't understand, I should be in a capacity to make them understand or people who have basic knowledge about that, how I can provide additional knowledge to them. Or if people who are of very high knowledge about the information, what I'm going to talk, then I have to give them information which is beyond what they are expecting. OK, so all these things become very, very important when we are trying to be adaptive to my audience. OK, the next one is have a great deal on the situation what we are handling. Well, first and foremost, understand what is the importance of the situation. If they are giving you like college uh, speeches or uh, writing essays or something, it's OK. But here, once you become a CS or any other person, you will be one of the uh, board members or managers. So you should know how to present the information. You should understand what is the situation in the company. Based on that, we should adapt and talk favorable to the employees, favorable to the management. OK, you should be in good terms. So it's very important you have uh, understood the situation very well before you gather words in which you're going to express your information. And the most important thing is kindly ensure you're not um, omitting or leaving out any important details um, in uh, in order to convey your message. 
so there will be certain points so always it is advisable before you start a speech have certain bullet points okay so ensure if these four bullet points or five points or six points whatever you want to speak once you are completing make sure these basic points are not being left out okay so it is always very very important to understand why we started sp speaking on this concept and how this concept can be explained if i'm explaining this concept i have to be very sure that the information is not being lost okay for that perspective i should be very clear as an a speaker and no i am not leaving out on any particular information okay then you have uh, uh, tips for choosing the right words so i have a good vocabulary now but i have to become a, a good speaker or uh, I have to be a good presenter. If that is the case, I have to choose the right words as suitable for my audience, okay? So if I want to choose the right words, what are the things or principles that I have to follow? The first one is simplicity. So that's what I told you, don't use any complex words when you're doing a speech for normal audience or basic audience, okay? Or people who don't know English or uh, people who understand English but they can't talk English confidently or uh, people who have basic knowledge about English, okay? So for even for them, even we are explaining, our language should be very, very simple. It should not be very hi-fi or uh, high-end language or high-end words or vocabularies being used, okay? That is best and the quickest response is very, very important. And when I'm giving my best and simplest uh, quickest uh, response i have to ensure i have a simplicity in my language so everybody can come and talk to me everybody can approach me and everybody can uh, have an expressive thought okay so all those things will become very important then you have uh, colloquial english is perfectly polite perfectly uh, acceptable that is um, colloquial english is the language what we talk okay most of the times what we talk will not be the same language what we write so when uh, generally what happens is when i'm talking i might use different words but when i'm uh, writing i have more clarity i have time i can present my information so when i'm presenting my um, uh, information verbally then colloquial language is the uh, normal language what we talk okay everyday language what we talk in english so that language is completely fine okay we need not be worried so if you see i will use the word okay uh yeah uh fine okay so all these words will not be used when i'm doing a writing so that is called as colloquial english then use familiar words here uh the words with sharp and clear meaning it is always advisable to use familiar words which is familiar to your audience or your readers okay don't use words that are too um, difficult for them or they have to go search in a uh, dictionary and then find out the meaning and all those things okay then avoid stiff more difficult words that's what i explained then the next concept what comes into picture is jargons so what are jargons jargons if you see um, jargon is the language that is uh, unique to a particular field of knowledge that is science technology art trade profession they can be legal jargons military jargons political jargons okay so for example in legal what do we use we use a, a void of initio void of initio means from the beginning it is void or um uh, memorandums or articles okay so all these words what we speak this is particular to my particular profession okay but uh, let's say if i'm watching a science fiction movie or uh, i'm watching a science fiction documentary history related documentary or space related documentary they will speak about certain terms which we will not understand but people who are very good in that particular stream or who has done a basic study about that particular stream they will understand what are these concepts okay they are called as jargons so let's say we call it as a uh, tech savvy or uh, we speak about phones we would speak about androids uh, we will talk about uh, apple uh, apple users or uh, we will talk about uh, applications apps or um, in apps we will talk about gaming apps few people will know what are the gaming app names or uh, what is the application that is required for gaming apps we will not be knowing why because those are the basic terms which a person will gain when they start working in that particular field okay that is what we call it as jargons okay jargon has two parts one is the private language that only the person in that particular field can understand okay who is a legal person or a technical person or something 
then the other one is wider acceptance of certain certain words or phrases in general language used by the public okay so those are now if we call it as tech savvy we all know a person who is a technological very savvy he that person is called as a tech savvy person who has all the information about technology so that is a basic language which now that jargon has become in a common use okay tech savvy but the same term if i give it as android application 204 android application 205 uh, android version 4.5 okay we will not understand what 4.5 means because a person who is in that particular field we will I will understand that particular jargon okay so these are called as jargons which will be used by particular teams then you have avoid uh, using superfluous words or verbosity that is um, uh, words which are uh, not generally used okay but which are very difficult to pronounce or difficult to understand difficult to understand by a common man okay those are called as superfluous Verbosity is an expressive style that uses excessive or superfluous words. For example, I would say Shashi Tharoor. Okay, the words what he uses, most of the words we will not understand. Most of the people now have told that uh, if you come to speech, we have to get a dictionary along with us. Why? Because he speaks such um, high level uh, words which he picks up and speaks, we will not understand the meaning. Okay, we always have to go and look for more words to do necessary uh, things or understand the meaning and all these things. Okay, that's what is called as superfluous or uh, verbosity. Kindly don't use such words. Okay, then what you are trying to convey the information, it will not be conveyed. Then you have choose short words. Short words are basically better than long words. That is simple, uh, good, uh, excellent, um, or uh, very. Uh, efficient okay use some words like this which are simple and short which my uh, audience or readers will be able to understand okay don't use something like very uh, difficult ones then what happens is uh, when you use long words only when you think your reader knows it okay that is know the range of your uh, audience or speakers or sorry audience or uh, readers based on that you can go ahead and use long words otherwise kindly ensure you use or small words that is not with any prefixes or suffixes or any abbreviations or things like that try to avoid all those things then select words for precise uh, words for precise meaning writing requires considerable knowledge of the language so once uh, we will do this down now okay that is using a single word instead of multiple words okay uh, it's always good to use the single word so that i am not using multiple words in order to express my feelings or um, thoughts or um, uh, expressions and all these things so it is always good to ensure you are not using too many words but using uh, the equivalent or exact meaning word so that your presentation will be easier okay then after that you should for this what happens is first and foremost you should know um, you should have a very good knowledge of the language only then it is possible for you to use the right word in your uh, speech or in your writing skills then it is always uh, fewer or fewer or lesser for example they have given this word fewer and lesser both means the same but fewer will come in terms of countable uh, measurable products less will come for anything knowledge uh, intellectuals all these things less will be used so we should know where to use the word fewer where to use the word less okay so that's where english has its art okay every language will have an art you can't use any word in front of any word so kindly know where to use these words based on that you start writing your uh, article or um, presentation speech or whatever it is then use general neutral words so what are general neutral words now today what is happening is the economy uh, or in the environment altogether everybody is becoming equal so a man and woman both have equal roles today even a woman is a, a chairman of a, a board and even a woman takes up as a pilot um, nasa scientists okay they are into all roles so kindly don't be specific and say uh, he okay so in business communication kindly keep it as neutral that is uh, before in the previous generation what we had it was uh, everywhere where we had a chairman okay we called it as a person who heads the board will be called as a chairman but today we are not having it as a chairman today we have it in a neutral way where we call it as a chairperson because a chairman can also be a woman okay so that's the reason why it is very important to ensure that you use neutral words don't go ahead and uh, give precise uh, meaning in your writing skill saying that 
he 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 okay because she has also come up and taken up equal roles so kindly keep it as they uh, will be equal uh, players uh, it can either be a man or a woman uh, any person that's that's more um, precise okay any person can take up this role he can take up a role he will be liable for this don't write it like this officer in default yes uh, that person officer in default that person will be liable don't write it as officer in default comma he will be liable that means you are stressing on a particular gender don't do that in your writing skills okay and yes so with this we understand what are the different choices of words which i have to make in order to present my information okay then the next concept what we start is the next concept what we start here is synonyms so in your school they would have taught you what are synonyms synonyms means similar words okay in school third standard fourth standard they would have taught us similar words write similar words write opposite words okay so that's nothing but um, a professional way of uh, telling similar words is synonym and the opposite words is called as antonyms okay so what happens with synonyms simple what we studied in school uh, the equal word for easy will be simple light effortless facile smooth effort is exertion uh, pains uh, trouble uh, elastic is flexible supple springly resilient okay so all these words are similar words and uh, these similar words are called as synonyms okay it is um, extremely difficult if not impossible to find two words in english which have uh, exactly the same meaning and usage okay it is pretty difficult but still uh, we don't call it as equal words we call it as similar meaning okay words which have similar meaning will be called as your synonym for example the other thing what they have given is begin commence start initiate okay all these four things means something is going to start but when we use this in the uh, common perspective what happens is here they have given begin is the most common word commence is used on formal occasions for um, court proceedings religious religious or other ceremonies and military operations start suggests a setting out from a particular point or on a journey course etc like a race or something like that often but not necessary after an action or waiting initiate is uh, initiate imply, implies taking off the first step or uh, steps as in the process okay so everything means something is going to begin okay but it doesn't mean officially the same so if i'm in a um oh, if i'm a professional i have to use the word commence if i'm an athlete or something i will use the word start if i'm a motorist or um, in uh, auto world then i will use the word initiate okay ignite initiate or something like this so these are something called as similar words okay then uh, in this uh, chapter, uh, they have given you certain uh, words and along with their synonyms. So in exam, what they can ask approximately what they can ask is they can give you a word and they can ask you what is the synonym out of the four words, which is the best suitable synonym. OK, they can ask you like that for that perspective here in the textbook itself. We have given you certain words. OK, you can go through all these words along with their uh, synonym. Fine. So kindly go through. We have given you a big list, okay, for synonyms, antonyms, and all these things. So you can go through all these words and understand what is their synonym and antonym. Okay. Uh, I have given you yesterday one more website, uh, M I F N W. Even there, if you go and click, um, uh, if you give any particular word, it will tell how it is supposed to be pronounced. How? What is the synonym? What is the antonym? Okay. So all the things will be provided in provided in that website for every word that you use okay then you have antonyms antonyms are nothing but the word opposite word or contrary in the meaning okay so here even in uh, english finding a exact opposite is equally tough for example what they have given here is soft drinks against hot drinks soft color against bright color soft tone against weird tones soft texture was were against rough texture soft light against glaring light see the word soft will not have the same opposite when the nature of something when i'm trying to explain okay like a drink 
color texture okay when i'm trying to add some more verbs or adjectives or verbs or adverbs when i'm trying to add that the meaning of soft will not remain same exact opposite for the other word also okay it keeps changing so that's why it is very difficult for, for us to tell what is the exact opposite of a word so generally in school they would have taught us soft means hard okay but soft hard will not be the same exact opposite today so everything has different meanings so based on the usage the opposite word will be different okay uh, similarly they have given other example where it is slender cane versus thick cane slender man versus fat man slender chance versus bright chance okay slender means slight but slight will not have an opposite of um uh, high okay higher chances slighter chances to higher chances or something like that it will always be different based on the usage so always know antonyms keeps differing uh, as synonyms okay based on their usage so basically antonyms means similar words uh, uh sorry antonyms means opposite words synonyms means similar words okay so after that we have given you a list of antonyms also you can go across and prepare on this for additional words if you want to prepare you can follow mi for w okay then after that you have something called as homophones so what happens with homophones in homophones homo means same and phone means sound so when i pronounce this word the word has a same pronunciation okay for example axis axis okay but when i'm speaking in uh, normal english okay when i'm pronouncing and going access and excess will uh, uh, will will sound like the same word okay but both the words even if they sound like the same they are they have a different meaning the similar way you go with advise advice or eight eight bear bear sell sell okay so all these words they might sound similar but the meaning and the spelling entirely will be different for example um, access means the workers could access the manager freely that is approachable the production is far in excess of the target that is more than okay so access means approachable excess means more the same way advice is a noun that ends with the word s advice is a verb which ends with the sound z advice advice okay so um, this is the difference between advice and advice then you have eight and eight eight is i ate something eight is number eight okay then you have bear and bear bear is a uh, what i am trying to bear it on my body okay something that's heavy decorated or something like that then bear is an animal then you have cell and cell one cell is what we have in the blood or uh, phone all those things will be called cell the other cell is buy and sell okay cell cell okay that will be your homophones then you have homonyms so what are homonyms here homonyms means words home uh, homo means same but nim means name a uh, uh, homonym is a single word with one spelling that has more than one meaning so here what they say is it is a single word it is a, a single word but the single word will not have the um, same meaning when used in different sentences so uh, when we get into legal aspects also we will have certain um, legal terms uh, when we are studying any legal uh, journals or uh, petitions or appeals or anything so when that is being studied certain concepts will have a different meaning when it is being used in the legal perspective for example what they start here is they start with something called as bear so bear uh, as two words okay bear me bear can be an animal bear or it can be tolerance okay the same way they have given it as address one is um i can give you the address of a good attorney the letter was addressed to me okay one i will help you find one person the other one is addressed to me then you have band band so band one band is a uh, hair band or something like that the other band is music band then you have bat and bat one is that flying bat coronavirus thing the other one is cricket bat then you have match match one is a uh, cricket match the other one is uh, do not strike a match or use electricity match box what we use that one then uh, mean and mean one is um, uh, what i try to explain the other one is uh, arithmetic mean median that one okay then you have right right one is 
correct right the other one is direction right okay so these are called as homonyms okay one is homophones then we understood what is homonyms okay then you have single words for a group of words i explained you already in my writing skills i have to use a single word instead of using a group of words so that it will help me uh, present my information in a better way with less number of words okay so here uh, in this concept they have explained you what are the single words for a group of words even in your exam they can give you a statement like this and then they can tell what is the up uh, similar or closest uh, group of words for this okay what is the closest single word for this so i can give you as a uh, great um, inordinate uh, desire to gain or hoard wealth that's called avarice so instead of avarice they can give you these four options i can and they can tell you what is that equivalent option for that you have to write the word avarice okay so that's how they have given you even for this we have given you a set of examples okay like pleasant sound is uh, euphony and uh, deliberate killing of a whole community is called uh, genocide then the place where an airplane is housed is called as an hangar okay like this we have given you certain examples in the textbook you can go with those examples if you want more words kindly go with mi4w or any other uh, online websites okay online websites will give you more words so you learn few more things and once you start doing this you will understand what is the similar words you will at least be able to identify which are your similar words then you have words frequently misspelled so which are the words that are frequently misspelled uh, why misspelling needs to be avoided that is this spelling is hard and misspelling are not only common but also awkward in professional context uh, what happens is you have to be very very clear of the spelling what you're trying to write so let's say you're writing something like opportunity okay so uh, i remember once when i i wrote opportunity in a hurry okay so i was writing opportunity i didn't use o p p o okay instead of that i, I somehow overwritten i had overwritten it as o p p u okay so then when somebody found out and told me i felt so embarrassed that okay in a hurry i've just missed it out okay so this is what is very very important that we have to be very very conscious on what we are trying to write might be we will be in a hurry or we will be in an uh, uh, like we will not overthink that we will think oh this is the spelling we'll write and we'll keep going okay so when we try to do that it will look very embarrassing in professional life okay so kindly ensure the spellings what you write once you uh, start with your executive or become a cs kindly ensure the words what you write are really clear okay and you're not using any uh, spelling mistakes like for absence you have to write it this is the correct word but we write it as c and this year or san okay accommodate we generally write accommodate mm we leave out mm then archive what we achieve what we do ie we alter calendar license receipt tomorrow okay tomorrow m m m uh, we can repeat m twice or r twice or something like that it can be a mistake so kindly avoid spelling mistakes then the next one is a spelling and pronunciation in english this is one of the trickiest thing at least in india all the city names or something if you see everything will be the same okay but if you go with uh, any other foreign countries the word will be different the pronunciation will be different okay so if you go to europe and all um, the word what will be given because they use english only even for french okay they use english only for even for so the way you uh, uh, spell out that or uh, you try to read that it will be entirely different pronunciation what they will read we will think this is how english is to, supposed to be pronounced but the pronunciation will be different okay so kindly be cautious when you are using certain words in certain regions at least in india we are pretty comfortable okay but um, might be when certain words are being used these words will uh, the wording will be different the pronunciation will be different so kindly be cautious about that when you are trying to pronounce certain words or when a pronunciation is being made when you are trying to write okay when dictation or something is being made when you are trying to write kindly note what word they are pronouncing okay because pronunciation and the uh, words will be uh, different the letters what's being used in the words will be different so kindly ensure we don't do that mistake okay 
for this yes good di dictionaries also have a uh, phonetic chart so if you i i don't know whether i'll have time if i have time i'll try to do this otherwise mi for w if you go below each word they will give you phonetics phonetics next to that they will give one speaker button if you click on that speaker button it will tell how to pronounce that word actually okay so that's called as phonetics uh, might be the word is different but the pronunciation will be given in a different format like where you have to pronounce i more where you have to pronounce e more um like that they will teach you kindly go through this it is very very helpful okay so we have restricted time so we can't go and explain all those things but um take time go through that website and there if you check it will tell you how to pronounce a word and there will be a speaker you can use that what is the meaning of the word what is the synonym what is the antonym and how it can be used in a sentence okay everything is being provided in that particular website and it's very very helpful okay then you have spelling errors so what happens in spelling errors adequate care should be taken to spell words correctly in all communication so that you are able to uh, communicate effectively and impressively so here what is very important certain alphabets and letters are repeated in a word kindly make sure you don't make a mistake tomorrow occasion beginning and all these things then one has to sometimes choose between i e and e i be very careful and choose correctly then you have uh, e can be either dropped or retained with uh, when changing certain words like truly in writing truly you can have e or you can remove e both are correct an extra letter at times alters the meaning of the word lose those okay be careful don't make that mistake when noun and verb of, uh, verb forms have the uh, same word has different spelling advise advise practice practice okay so these words be careful then words have the same pronunciation but different spelling whether whether break break all these things when a choice has been made between i s e and i z e okay so uh, as i told you we have british and english accent so kindly be careful which accent you are using and use that particular word so uh, s e or uh, s e is more professional british language z e is english okay when a warm, uh, when a word similarly spelt has two variants with uh, different meanings in past and present participle so i told you past participle present perfect continuous and all those things in that verb okay uh, write will be uh, sorry read will be read 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 write will be write wrote a jump will be jump jumped jumping okay so all these things be very cautious when you are writing the words then you have a uh, stress and rhythm stress and rhythm is nothing but how i pronounce my word so certain words will have one syllable so what is syllable syllable is the sound when i pr pronounce so one syllable means fame fame is one word name claim train two syllable means confess red dress transgress three syllables means sacrifice then a uh, tarpaulin four syllable means retribution satisfaction okay so when four this is basically in music what they teach the same thing okay so when i pronounce a word whether there is one syllable or two syllables or three syllables i have to understand and based on that i should know the rhythm and then i have to pronounce okay so pronunciation will be very important and this will help you have more clear and uh, better pronunciation and understanding for the uh, audience or readers okay then what comes into picture is abbreviations abbreviations are the short forms of words or phrases or texts for example how will it start abbreviations start with the two letters or three word letters or words which is being used like ma uh, pm bbc okay manuscript what we saw in the previous uh, chapter the same thing okay so they there we saw it as full stop where it is being used here they are giving it as abbreviations okay so that is uh, either you can have it like that or it can be FICCI Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and uh, Industry or it can be uh, Mr. or uh, Dr. Scientific Weights again will have um, abbreviations. Chemical names will again have abbreviations. Okay. So these are called as when a short form is being used instead of a bigger word, then it is called as abbreviation. So what are plurals in abbreviations? So if I want to give plurals and abbreviations, how we can use it? One is P means page pp means pages okay ma uh, ma is master in arts uh, if i uh, if i give it as s it will be mas or m means minister of uh, sorry member of uh, parliament if i give s it, that means a group of mps 
then captains okay so mr will be messrs and 1 kg 4 kg like this abbreviations we can use okay plural forms of abbrevi abbreviation can be used then uh, the next concept what we are going to cover today is idioms and phases so phases if you see i had explained to you in the previous chapter that is a sentence will have uh, dependent sentence, independent sentence, followed by a phase. Okay. The next one is idioms. Idioms are nothing but um, phases which are being used in the uh, English language, which over a period of time will not mean something directly, but indirectly it will mean something. For example, fall, the sparrows fall, or the Roman Empire's fall. That means uh, I lost all my wealth. Okay. If something like that happens, or uh, Ajay lost all his wealth, that means he had a Roman fall. Okay, that means like a Roman empire, he had built his empire, but today he has lost everything, like Vijay Malya. Okay, we can say let us, uh, uh, oh, what happened to Vijay Malya's wealth? Oh, it was a Roman empire's fall. Okay, so that means uh, he has lost everything. So instead of uh, expressing our uh, thoughts directly, we go ahead and use an indirect method, okay, to express our thoughts in an other alternative way. So we directly don't want to hurt somebody or praise somebody or um, do something like this, then we use an indirect method that is called as idioms. Like uh, ever got a Mumbai number at first go, that means lucky number, joker or uh, something like this. It is one thing. He is always on the go. That means he always wants to rush up and finish the work. Okay. That's what is called as idioms. Okay. Then the second one, what is comes into here is a phase. What happens in a phase is it is a group of words, a part of a sentence, which does not make a complete sentence by its own, but has an independent meaning and makes some sense like on the hill, about the town, under the tree. Okay, so all these words give certain meaning, but it is not a complete sentence. Okay, so it is not a complete sentence. It is a part of a sentence or it is a small word. Okay, a group of words put together, which is giving certain meaning, but it is not a complete sentence. So these um, things are called as phases. Okay, then after this, what they have done is in this uh, chapter, we have given certain um idioms okay uh, verbal idioms uh, noun idioms and all these things where if you go through you will understand back uh, beat back means compelled uh, to retreat okay uh, they have given the meaning what does that mean so boil down means to amount to something finally the entire milk was boiled down to uh, uh, basundi or something like that okay so where the entire content is being reduced uh, cast aside, cast aside means kick them out, okay, or reject or throw them out. Something like that is called as cast aside. Oh, he was being cast aside, okay. That means he was being thrown out. Uh, he was not being allowed into the selection process or something like this. Cut off with the shilling to give something a mere strip in the will. That is, we have to complete a process, but I'm not giving him the chance to complete it, okay. He was not given a chance. Then gloss over. Gloss over is he is not completing the things, but simply he is trying to do something, ignore this part and taking the credit for that. Okay. Then uh, labor under to suffer under uh, uncomfortable situations is called labor under. Okay. So these are the words which we have given. Here you have lots of words. Kindly go ahead and read all these words. How they will ask you an exam? Yes, they can ask you one particular word like this and they can give you four uh, options and they can ask you what does that mean? Okay, so then you're supposed to write this particular meaning. You're supposed to select one among that the options. You have to select any one of these options. Okay, so for that perspective, uh, there is almost like two or three pages of idioms being given your phases you don't have idioms only you have so all these idioms uh, in different perspectives they are given along with the meanings you can go through these idioms and it will be helpful for you okay so after idioms there are lots of idioms <laughs> given much more okay kindly kindly go through all these things take your time study slowly and understand all these things so with respect to money what are the idioms ready money or cash means immediately i got the cash bandits means uh, that money is not going to come back in short supply means i don't have what is required for me to bring a thing under the hammer means i have so i've sold uh, i've lost everything and everything is going for an auction okay that's called bring a thing under hammer so under warfare what are the idioms uh, ships and seas what are the idioms fire light candle so all these things they have given for idioms okay then the next concept what comes is proverbs so what are proverbs proverbs are nothing but universal truths 
or uh, like what we have dohas or something like this okay so these are considered as a uh, universal truths and this is globally accepted okay each language each country each region will have their own proverbs fine uh, these proverbs have been um, like what is being developed in english is being converted into other languages or what's being developed in hindi um, uh, marathi uh, punjabi tamil kannada malayalam or whatever language that's being converted into other language over time why because it has certain essence and people are expecting like poets and all these writers are expecting this is being acquired by our community as well okay for that reason uh, idioms are being converted uh, sorry proverbs are being converted into other languages as well okay so this is basically what happens is uh, uh, with folk writers literature writers and all these things this has become used more and more often in uh, if you see in movies or dramas or writings and all these things these proverbs are being used and hence over period of time most of the proverbs have become simple and under under unadored okay so uh, we don't understand the exact meaning how these uh, proverbs have come into picture and we simply use them but if we see each doha or each proverb it will have so much of good information which we will be able to take it up like uh, for example uh, uh, here if you see hope springs eternal in human breast that is one never loses hope in their heart okay better late than never so kindly start doing it so don't delay it you will be wasting time fools rush in where angels fear to tread that is a uh, uh, sick of reckless person uh, he is always like this he we have told him a number of times he doesn't want to listen he has uh, raised or done something and he has met with an accident okay a fool and his money are soon aparted that means uh, if you give a, a fool some money uh, he will not sustain it okay if you want to criticize a person or something then they will use this word okay that's what is called as proverbs so here you have a list of proverbs being given proverbs i don't think they will ask you in questions or uh, examples or something so you can check all these things but study for your uh, understandings okay then you have foreign words and phrases where we understand how uh, foreign words that is english words latin words greek french all these words are being used in english language over a period of time that is like uh, um abinishio abinishio is a latin word from a from the beginning okay so in english uh, today in legal language we use this word a lot void ab uh, sorry abinishio void abinishio all these things then you have ab origin from the beginning okay so uh, nothing but foreign words which are being used in english language they have given the meanings and uh, you just have to study all these things uh, try to study over and over uh, it will be easier for you to understand and again here they can give you any uh, foreign word okay and they can ask you what does that mean okay so in this context whatever is given in the textbook all these words if you study it's more than enough see when it is given as f it means french if it is given as l it means uh, latin when it is given as g it means german okay the origin of the word is german uh, hoi poli, uh, poli uh, is the common people okay like this you have to understand and then you have to study the list of foreign words what they have given in this chapter okay so after that uh, abbreviation forms uh, of words i've explained you what is abbreviated forms the same thing uh, when a word is being a uh, short form okay then we use it as abbreviated forms but kindly uh, abbreviated forms are very helpful when i'm taking shorthand notes or uh, when the meeting is happening and i have to take a minutes or something like that then abbreviated forms will be very very helpful but kindly ensure that uh, the things to remember while doing abbreviated form is do not use an abbreviation if it cannot be avoided only then and it, if it can be easily avoided kindly don't use abbreviations okay that is the best thing what example everybody gives and the second one is in an abbreviation use full stops capital letters in a conventional way okay don't use it in a random way when abbreviations are being used kindly be very careful then do not forget to punctuate the rest of the sentences normally so punctuation is very very important kindly don't leave it out so what are the abbreviations generally used ad anno domini or uh, bc before christ or uh, um, all these uh, small words are being provided where etc means etc or uh, ie means uh, uh, written as what it means or uh, phd means philosophy okay then uh, they have given uh, av means advalaram 
uh, IA means in absentia, MS means manuscript, PS means postscriptum. Okay, so and it is also very strongly advised. Kindly don't use such words like through night. What you use for your WhatsApp language? Okay, don't use all those things. Uh, day of the week and the month of the year in normal flow of text. Kindly don't avoid it. Words at the beginning of a sentence should not be abbreviated. Kindly write the full sentence. People's name, unless those abbreviations have become completely as accepted nicknames, like your lecturers, faculties, they will have name GK, GR, or something like that. Until it's popular, don't use that. Um, uh, courses such as ECHO for economics and polyscience for polyscience can be used provided it has global meaning. Okay. Otherwise, kindly don't use abbreviations. These are the things which we have to do with respect to um vocabulary okay with respect to vocabulary these are the concepts which we have covered today fine uh we can just start with the uh, doubts if you have anything i have another two three minutes okay how to deal with the exam yes kindly go through this uh, uh topics okay after you go through these topics it will be asked in an uh what's this objective type itself so objective type i've explained you more often that it will be easier for you to go ahead and uh, study okay and you also have um what do you call um mock exams available in the chapter website if you contact the chapter they will explain you okay g stands for german greek yeah it depends Yeah, this PDF, what is given here is more than enough. Kindly go through that. That's more than enough. Oh my God, mm, the answers are going very fast. Wait. Website name I have given. Uh, then after that, somebody had asked something. Mm. Uh, G is Greek. See what is related to uh, exam. Kindly ask us. It will be easier for us to explain. Ma'am is active voice, passive voice, direct, indirect uh, speech. Uh, same no it is it uh, yeah it is same it is similar okay idioms will will be asked out of this topic pdf no it will not be asked what is given here is more than enough mm, icsa mock test don't show results uh, that you have to check with the chapter okay uh, okay then after that um, all idioms they are huge in number yeah but you have to study we can't help you have to go through that okay Ma'am, we can't see what I'm not able to see. Uh, synonyms and antonyms, uh, we need to do any extra. If you know basic things, well and good. Otherwise, you can uh, do certain efforts and understand the words. Okay. If you know the root words, it will be easier for you. So uh, the recordings, we are not yet sure whether it will be provided or not. So since this class is already being made available, it is advisable for you to attend. Okay, fine. Uh, so we will end the class here and we will have the next class on Friday, that is 7.45 to 9.15. Okay, thank you.